Welcome to the Horror Unmasked podcast, where we unmask the monsters and, and explore, explore the lore. lore. I'm Amber. And I'm Lily. And today we will be dissecting the boogeyman. Let's turn off the lights. The movie begins with a small girl in her crib. She is clearly in distress, and as her closet door begins to open, the camera pans back to her crib. When a hand curls over the edge, and blood is spattered across a family photo. In another scene, an older girl is seen stepping into a closet, where she grabs some clothes and looks at them longingly. As she steps out of the closet, she enters what appears to be an art room, where an unfinished family portrait sits on an easel. In another room, a little girl is asleep, but is startled as her alarm clock goes off, and her light, shaped like a moon, rolls to the floor. As she turns off all of her lights, she rolls the moon into her closet, making sure there's no monsters. In what appears to be an office, a therapist, Dr. Will Harper, is talking to a patient about her relationship issues. The therapist ends the session since it is his two daughters' first day of school. His office seems to be in his house, and his daughters come downstairs. The youngest, Sawyer, heads out to school, as the older sister, Sadie, comes down to seemingly be wearing one of her mother's old dresses. The father compliments Sadie on the dress, saying it looks nice on her. In the car on the way to school, the family jokes about pulling one of Sawyer's loose teeth out. Next, Sadie is walking through the halls of her high school when she stops at her locker. She pulls out a bag with a note that says, For Sadie, have a great day and very rotted food on the inside. Clearly the bag is from her deceased mother. One of her friends, Bethany, comes up to speak to Sadie and welcome her back to school since her mother's death. A few other girls come up to Sadie to compliment her dress until they find out it belonged to her mother. One of the friends speaks up saying that it's weird to be wearing the dress. Sadie calls her a bitch and another girl pushes her into the locker busting the bag of rotten food onto her and her mother's dress. Sadie storms out of school and leaves. Back at the house, Will sends off another patient. Before he goes back to his office and pops some pills, a man named Lester opens the door and begs him for help. As the man sits down, he asks if Will could close the door to the closet, as it seems something is lurking in the dark. As the man opens up about his life, he reveals that his entire family was killed by an entity who had been stalking him and his family. Lester then shows Will a drawing that his daughter had made. Freaked out, Will makes an excuse to leave the room and calls the police. Left alone in the room, Lester looks over to the closet to find that it has been opened again. Sadie is also upstairs, doing laundry, when she hears a noise and goes to investigate. She gets close to the art room, and when she steps into a puddle of what she thinks is blood. As she opens the door, she discovers that the spill is just paint. However, the room is trashed, and the unfinished family portrait is on the floor. She hears a struggle coming from the closet, and as she enters, her father comes in asking if she's okay, and turns the closet light on. The door closes, and Lester is seen hanging from the back of the door, dead. Sawyer is on the bus home when she arrives. There are police and ambulance outside of her house. In the house, Will is talking to the police about Lester when Sawyer walks inside and sits with Sadie on the steps as they listen to what happened. The police say that Lester had committed suicide because of the guilt of killing his family. Sadie then tells the police that she heard a struggle in the closet not one that sounded like suicide. The police brushed it off and leaves. Later that night, Will is putting Sawyer to bed, where she has many lights on. Yet somehow, her closet is still dark. Sawyer asks her dad to check the closet for any monster to discover nothing. Sadie is also in her room when Will comes to check on her as well. Sadie asks her dad about her mom's death, to which he is really vague and tells her that she should go speak to her therapist, even though he is one. I mean, dude, just talk to your kids. <laughs> right. Back in Sawyer's room, she is cuddling her moonlight. When the closet door flings open, suddenly a creature comes scuttling out and under her bed. 
where Sawyer hangs off her bed and rolls her moonlight underneath to get a better look. Which is insane. <laughs> Who does that? Who does that? No. Under the covers, I would be. Exactly. She is scared by something she sees and falls off the bed. Meanwhile, Sadie is in her room looking up videos of how to contact the dead when Sawyer comes in to tell her there's something in her room. Not believing her, Sadie sees blood on Sawyer's shoulder and finds that it's from her loose tooth. Trying to help her out, Sadie ties a string to her tooth and a doorknob, using the door slamming trick to pull it out. On the count of three, Sawyer tells Sadie to wait, but the door slams shut anyway on its own. As Sadie comforts her sister, we hear a humming and a tune that her mom used to sing to her. When trying to go to sleep, something behind the door mimics her mom's humming and steals the tooth on a string. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Sadie and Sawyer go to see their therapist, where they tell her about the scary monster Sawyer saw, where she connects it to the death of Lester. The therapist tries an experiment with a red box light, where it flashes more and more until it is pitch black in the room. The darker it gets, the more scared Sawyer becomes, seeing the same creature in the corner from before. Sawyer gets so scared that she pees herself. Poor baby. I know, man. You know, I understand, like, you know, making therapy so that you actually experience it, but yeah, man, sometimes like it goes exposure therapy. Exposure therapy, mm -hmm. but she's a girl. She's a little kid. She's a little like, baby. Maybe a little slower. Mm -hmm. She's still losing teeth, for God's sake. Yeah. The therapist is seen talking to their dad where she tells them that he can't avoid talking about things forever. In the car, he apologizes to his girls about letting Lester into the house. Back home, Sadie does research about Lester. In Sawyer's room, she is under her covers as we hear Sadie's voice checking in on her. She lifts the covers to find Sadie is not there. Instead, Sadie has found her way to her dad's office, looking through his things, continuing her research on Lester. Sawyer ventures out into the dark hallway as she rolls her moonlight down the hall. Back in Will's office, Sadie finds her father's tape recorder with Lester and his notebook. While Sadie etches over an imprint of a drawing in the notebook, Sawyer hears her mom's broken humming in the hallway and rolls her moonlight across the floor again, only for it to be violently snuffed out. As she stands in the dark, something stands up behind her, and the broken moonlight rolls towards her feet. At the same time, Sadie finishes etching and discovers the picture of the monster as a loud screech comes through the tape recorder. Down in the kitchen, Sadie gets a snack when Sawyer comes downstairs upset, thinking that Sadie was the one in the hallway, playing tricks on her. They get into a sibling altercation when the notebook falls on the floor and the picture of the creature flips open. Baffled, Sawyer stares at the picture, and Sadie says she's determined to figure out what it is. The next day at school, Sadie asks Bethany to drive her to Lester's house. Sadie then tells Bethany to stay in the car, but to call on the phone. Sadie dumb. goes, huh? that's, that's dumb. Yeah. Yeah, it's dumb. Always go two people. Don't. Buddy system. Buddy system. Sadie goes into the house to find it in shambles. She writes her information down on the fridge, saying that she needs to talk, when she hears a noise and sees a flashing light. She turns the light towards the upper stairs, where veins of black creep up the wall and cover the house. Sadie follows and asks if anyone is there. Upstairs, she discovers lots of lit candles and Polaroid pictures on the wall. When she closes a door, her picture gets taken, and as it develops, there is a creature in the background. Dun dun dun! A woman comes out of the shadows and is revealed to be Lester's wife. Sadie asks her about the creature in the drawing, saying that her sister has seen it. Lester's wife reveals that her daughters called it the Boogeyman. As she tries to give more information, the wife pulls out a shotgun and says that it's right behind Sadie and shoots at the boogeyman. Sadie runs out of the house and back to the car where Bethany is extremely worried. 
Sadie just believes that the woman is crazy. And as she gets home, Sawyer's waiting for her and begins to follow her upstairs, asking more questions about what happened. Pissed off, saying that monsters aren't real, Sadie slams the door in Sawyer's face when the boogeyman knocks it back down, jumps Sadie, and shoves its hand into her mouth. Sadie wakes up, coughing and gagging, revealing that some of this was just a dream. Sadie hears a noise coming from outside her room. When she opens the door, she sees that Sawyer had heard it too, but tells her to go back into her room. Sadie follows the noise over to the art room again and sees a light in the closet. Her dad comes out, and Sadie realizes that he's cleaning all of her mom's stuff out. Sadie gets upset, and her dad says that it's not healthy to keep all of her things, but Sadie doesn't want to let go and begins to put her mom's boxes in the basement. In the basement, Sadie looks through her mom's things where she finds many art supplies, a video camera with a video of Sadie as a baby with her mom, and an old lighter. Sadie tries to hold a seance again and asks if her mom is in the room, asking for help and to blow the lighter out. Sadie hears a noise coming from behind the shelves where she turns on the light and her mom's dress is hanging up. At school, Sadie is in the bathroom, watching the video camera footage, when Bethany comes in to talk. Feeling bad for the loss of connection, Bethany asks Sadie to have a get-together with her and her friends at Sadie's house. Back at the house, Will talks to Sawyer about promising to leave Sadie and her friends alone for more PlayStation time. When Sadie comes down the stairs, she opens the door to let her friends come inside. When the scene cuts to them, silent up in Sadie's room. The girls ask if there's anything to drink, but there's no alcohol in the house. Sensing the disappointment, Sadie remembers that she has some of her mom's old weed. When the joints get around to Sadie, she takes a puff and immediately begins coughing. The coughing becomes too much, and Sadie runs to the bathroom where she feels something in her throat. She reaches into her mouth and finds a string. She begins to pull and pull, when finally... She reaches the end, where Sawyer's tooth is hanging. Disgusting. Disgusting. So gross. It's the worst scene. Uh, that's when I would throw up. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Bethany comes into the bathroom to check on Sadie when the other girls come in behind her with the tape recorder. The girls then ask if Sadie could show them the closet where Lester died, to which she reluctantly agrees. When she takes the girls to the room, the girls push Sadie inside and shut the door. It's pitch black and very eerie. All of a sudden, the creature shows its face to Sadie and reaches out to her. Sadie screams and tries to get out, but the door won't budge. Finally, when the door opens, Sadie crawls out and tells them to shut the door behind her. In anger, Sadie bitch slaps one of the girls who had been harassing her the most. Deserved. Deserved. Because of this, the girls storm out of the house, calling Sadie psychotic. As the girls leave... We see Sawyer playing on her PlayStation in the dark. Again, dumb. So dumb. Why? She senses something behind her and uses the light of the TV to try and see the creature. Sawyer tries to hide on the couch as the boogeyman creeps around trying to find her. Not hearing anything anymore, Sawyer sits up to see if the creature is still around. When she turns back, she finds that it is hovering above the TV when it finally attacks her, swinging her around the room and finally into the TV. The room goes dark. Sadie and Will come running down the stairs, freaked out, trying to help Sawyer. She wakes in a panic in the hospital, where Sadie is next to her, calming her down and telling her she believes her. While looking for her dad, Sadie walks through the halls of the hospital when she gets a call from Lester's wife saying she knows how to get rid of the monster and needs her help. Sadie finds her dad alone in a room and tries to convince him that the monster is real. Not believing her, he asks if she was high, saying he could smell weed on her. Sadie becomes upset and leaves the hospital to go to Lester's house. When she arrives, there are even more candles lit around the floor upstairs. Lester's wife shows Sadie the trap and tripwire she made when all of a sudden she grabs Sadie and ties her up, using her as bait. Fucked up. Absolutely. The boogeyman shows up almost immediately, and as it moves closer to Sadie, the candles around her begin to be snuffed out. 
the creature stops right before the tripwire and launches itself at Sadie, setting the tripwire off. Lester's wife shoots the boogeyman multiple times and believes it to be dead. However, the creature then attacks the wife, killing her, while Sadie runs out of the house and out towards the street. In a panic, Sadie calls her dad and tells them not to go inside the house. The dad is carrying Sawyer, but before he can leave, the monster grabs them and pulls them inside, causing the phone to fly out of his hand. Hearing this over the phone, Sadie runs home. Spoiler warning, skip ahead. When Sadie finally arrives, the house is pitch black. She wanders through the house, trying to find her dad and sister, when she sees blinking lights coming from a closet. When she opens the door, it's her sister Sawyer sitting on the floor with Christmas lights. Sawyer slams the door closed before getting a good look at Sadie and asks her questions only her sister would know. Realizing it is Sadie, she opens the door again. Sadie asks where their dad was, to which Sawyer points towards the basement. Sadie tells her sister that they won't lose another parent, and goes down into the basement. As she begins her descent, Sawyer shows up behind her, wrapped in the Christmas lights, and follows her sister down. Sneaking through the basement, Sawyer knocks over a bottle of paint thinner, alerting the creature. The boogeyman appears and attacks the girls, jumping through a shelf and knocking it over. The shelf falls on Sawyer, and the creature jumps Sadie instead. Hovering over Sadie, pinning her to the ground, the creature's face is right over her as a second pair of pink, slimy hands come out of its mouth and start to drain the blood from her. So gross. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Will comes out of the darkness and stabs the creature, causing it to let go of Sadie, flinging Will across the room. Sawyer goes running after her father, causing her lights to unplug from the wall and go out. Sadie looks for Sawyer as Will lights his wife's lighter, revealing he's very injured. The family huddles together, and Will apologizes to the girls. As the flame dies out, we hear the monster screech. Every time Will tries to flick the lighter on, the creature gets closer and closer. Finally, the lighter flicks on, in a very tall and strong blaze, stopping the creature from coming any closer. Sadie asks for her mom as the flame bends. The creature comes at them as Sawyer sprays an aerosol can towards the lighter, causing a gouge of flame to burst at the creature, sending it flying backwards. Sadie takes the aerosol can and tries to continue this method, but the can is emptied. Sawyer comes running up to the creature, spraying the creature with the paint thinner she had knocked over earlier, and Sadie tosses the lighter onto the creature, setting it ablaze. The creature screams in pain as the souls it has taken begin to pour out, also screaming. The boogeyman's nest goes up in flames along with the mother's old belongings. The family gathers and runs out of the burning house, escaping before it was too late. The three are on the couch, seeing a therapist together, while the dad begins to open up about his wife's death, admitting he didn't know if he was ready to take care of two children on his own. The family share a moment together, hugging and laughing. As they leave, Sadie is called back in by the voice of the therapist. The room, however, is dark, and there is a creak coming from the closet. As she goes to investigate, right before she opens the door, the therapist walks into the room and asks if she needs any help. Sadie shuts the closet door, realizing it wasn't the therapist who called her back. The end. Alrighty. So, um, this movie came out June 2nd, 2023. This year. Yeah, yeah. We're doing lots of this year movies. Yeah, yeah. Back-to-back most recent films. Yeah. The director is Rob Savage. Mm -hmm. He is savage for making this movie. Yeah. (laughs) It was distributed by 20th Century Studios Mm -hmm. and based on The Boogeyman by Stephen King. His short story. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The budget for this film was thirty million. Ooh, so they got a decent chunk bad. back, yeah. yeah. For that. And in the box office, it made eighty over eighty two million. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, not bad. Personally, I thought this movie was very good. Same. However, it only has a sixty one percent on Rotten Tomato, which is shocking. I think what we have discovered from continuously putting the Rotten Tomato um rating on here is that if you want to watch a movie you don't always have to go by yes 
Rotten Tomatoes. People I know they're very well do that too established, much. but because the problem is, is also people can review bomb things if they don't like it. Yeah. Um. And the biggest thing is, is that a review is just that. It's someone's opinion. Literally. Facts. Literally. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just watched you rub your face on the mic. <laughs> um but yeah the reviews it's you don't always have to go off of them especially the ratings because i have definitely people in my family that are like well it was highly rated and i'm like well okay that's great i've watched like b c tier movies that i like loved because they were just good regardless of whatever the score they I got thought was. this was really good I yeah. thought it was very endearing yes very very creepy the way they did oh, a yeah. lot of the scenes with the they boogeyman boogeyman freaked him. me out genuinely oh yeah he was so very good. props to savage yes props to savage he did very also, good also our main actors yes uh we have Sophie Thatcher as Sadie Harper Vivian Lyra Blair Ooh, I love that Ooh, name. I love her name. Crazy name. That's like, oh my god. That is, I, she her her name itself is good enough to be in like a haunted film. No, yeah, like Vivian Lyra Blair. I would not fuck with anyone with that name. Nah, nah. You have like a you have like ghosts in your closet. Yeah, I hope she grows up to be a genuinely good person. Yes, because her name is scary. It's spooky as shit. <laughs> it's kind of spooky. Anyway, she played Little Sawyer. Yee. So yeah, Little Sawyer Harper. And then we have Chris Messina, who's Dr. Will Harper. Yeah. The dad. I mean, we probably could have put Bethany in here because she's in here so much, but eh. mm. she's not like m- main character. She has points, but it's more of she's a facilitator yeah. of things that happen. Yes. Also, her character. Yeah. Uh, mm. Okay, I ship Bethany. You ship them? <laughs> I ship Bethany and Sadie. However,. Bethany's a bitch for hanging out with, with those, those girls. Yeah. Like, if they're clearly not nice at all to you, who, what's supposed to be your best friend. Yeah. No. You made friends with these people and they immediately start shitting on your best friend. Maybe don't hang out with them anymore. Yeah, I think no. That's a no for me, personally. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's my two cents on that. Anyway. Yeah. So, oh, man. I got lots of stuff for this. Lots and lots of things. That's great, man. Yeah. I mean, just in general about the creature itself is... Mm -hmm. There's so much much about the boogeyman. Especially lore-wise. There's so many versions of the boogeyman in every culture. It's it's a little unreal. It's a little a lot. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) I mean, even Rob Savage, when um, asked about the design of the creature, he didn't want... He didn't want it to be like, oh, I've seen the boogeyman and he's not scary you know right they have to they have to fight against a lot of the stereotypes that came across with the with the the word the boogeyman because because when you hear the boogeyman it's just the boogeyman boogeyman. (laughs) yeah not real (laughs) a little uh like something to scare children yeah and he wanted to make sure that it was like true to the way that stephen king yes made the creature and made it in his short story right yeah it was a basically he wanted to work with shadows more than he wanted to work with anything else because it's it starts off with just shadows it starts off with just like quick movements and and like pinpoint eyes out of the darkness yeah and it has a lot to do with they wanted it to fester in the audience's head about like what is it like what does it look like no and it did it did it definitely did and then when you finally see it it's just like oh god it's this like mishmash horrible conglomeration of just yes gross and it's like super creepy because there's like multi it literally had like another thing inside it yeah like yeah are those two separate entities is it the same entity and even when they finally like revealed what it looks like you still can't really tell exactly there's still this shroud of darkness yeah over it Mm -hmm. that still obscures it which is crazy to be fair maybe i don't want to see what it really looks like so (laughs) i mean honestly in the the fascinating thing is the fact that it like mimics that's terrifying no i hated that scene in the hallway i think that was the scariest one for me where sawyer's in the hall and she's like rolling her moonlight around and like it's the broken humming the other no the other scene that's very terrifying 
is the scene when Sawyer's getting attacked. It's always Sawyer. It's Sawyer always just, Sawyer. She just gets yeah. her shit kicked in. Because she's the youngest, I bet. She's the youngest, but also um, even at when he when they meet up with the wife, it's it always goes after the weakest link. Right. Which would be the youngest person. Mm-hmm. Um, because usually people don't believe that one, so it can fester longer yeah. until someone else sees it. Yeah. But I definitely feel like the scene in the living room when she's like... She looks behind her, sees the pin pinpricks, mm-hmm. and like her finger slips on her controller and it shoots off a thing. And she realizes she just starts shooting arrows yeah. that light up the screen mm-hmm. so that she could like see, see it. whatever it was in the corner. No, thank you. No, thank you. I would you. scream for my family. I would be like, scream I don't want bloody this. murder for them. It, yeah, no. No. Not a fan. Not uh-uh. a fan. Like, because obviously they're not asleep. Like, they're no, just... No, they're not. They're, they're literally just, upstairs. just effing upstairs. They're just upstairs talking. Right. So. Oh, they definitely didn't want to build, like, a suit or anything. Right. Because it would just take too much lo- too much time. So it's all just CGI, I'm guessing. Yeah, they were really... They didn't want to do it the cumbersome. Um, and it would add on to the amount of time that it took because they shot in 34 days. Damn. They shot in 34 days. So That's they crazy. didn't have a huge amount of time. And so, like, messing around with a practical suit would be a problem. No, yeah, that would be a problem. That's so, crazy because yeah. for two weeks leading up to the movie, like, yes. the three, the three, mm-hmm. the two kids and then the dad, they, yeah. like, spent two weeks, like, basically living with each other and exactly. deepening their bonds. And I mean, even for the... Uh, so that's, the, like, most of... Like, but the boogeyman, the only part that was made was the boogeyman's head. It was made as a 3D print huh. and they covered it. And they slathered it in KY jelly. Ew. And they lit it up. And their cinematographers and everything, they had it in every scene. It, it was nice because they were able to show, like, that's what it really looks like. And then right. they also had to then transform it into their back stuff with the VFX. Mm-hmm. And then when, I guess when they were doing the dialogue recording and post-production, they were showing off the first scene to uh, Vivian. Like, they were showing, like, the creature Mm-hmm. to vivian yeah and when they were doing the the post-production recording when she saw it it freaked her out so much that she wouldn't look at the screen for the rest of the recording Aww. and so they had to explain what was happening on the screen for her <laughs> poor baby but they didn't the problem is is that they were worried after that point because they were worried she wasn't gonna be able to watch the film mm-hmm. because she's in it she's obviously going to want to be able to see it yeah so what they did was is that they actually gave her the boogeyman head that they made and i guess she fell in love with it because now it sits in her bedroom now (laughs) oh it's her new moonlight it's her new moonlight yeah (sighs) wow but it's that girl's gonna grow up to be real creepy and i love it i mean it is crazy that it's a fully cgi cgi character yeah that it's and 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 here's i don't understand i don't see how they could make it is it was practical it's it clearly like he wanted to have some practicality but it it just wasn't going to be functional no in the end but yeah yeah i found out that the boogeyman has lots and lots of powers oh yeah lots of powers (laughs) and like i literally audibly gasped out loud when i heard this part yeah so he has nightmare manipulation Mm -hmm. which makes sense when um Sadie sadie had that dream um but they can obviously manipulate people's dreams to the point where the overwhelming fear will suffocate the victim so bad that their hearts might explode or their brains and they'll die holy shit yeah so that's wild that's crazy um they have the power of darkness Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. classic so you know um they can travel through actual shadows and darkness um it can become a shadow. Yeah. It can't be touched or seen unless he makes his presence known. Gotcha. So and he since, can kind of like fuck around the yeah. room. But like if, you, yeah. if he presents himself to you, it means that he becomes physical. Yes. Um, and also, obviously, darkness is yeah. everywhere. There's a shadow everywhere. So, exactly. And it can appear from any shadow. Any shadow. Ever. Yeah. Um, so obviously, that's why it's prone to like closets or under the bed or things like that. Yeah. So yeah, there's power of fear. Um, so obviously he thrives on fear. Yeah. Like many of Stephen King's creatures, yes. like it thrives on fear. Um, so it feeds off of the fear and um, 
breaks one's spirit there's all it's always something like that whether it's like yeah like payment mm-hmm, mm-hmm, uh mm-hmm. so yeah grim cuddy grim cuddy yep 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 bogeyman yep. it smile smile jesus oh my god yeah i see a common denominator here come on yeah. people come on horror people switch it up a bit <laughs> just kidding obviously that's kind of what it monsters works. need to do it works so yeah um a- apparently there's a power called black sand oh you want to know where i think that's from what so the boogeyman obviously like we've been talking shows up in many things mm-hmm. also is weirdly enough constantly always a children's villain sh- character yes but the black sand makes kind of sense if you're referencing i don't know where else it would be but i know for certain that guardians that has jack frost and sandman and all those characters you know the boogeyman is the villain in that film and he steals the sandman's sand to yeah. create nightmares yeah so I'm you assuming could do guardians it's a bit of that. or you could even do um my god it's my dad's favorite show it's uh i think it is called it's literally sandman. called sandman it is called sandman. Yeah, sandman so he just uses sand um which causes endless nightmares to anyone who he throws it to whereas you know dream sand is pleasant mm-hmm. which is turn... sandman yeah sandman mm-hmm. is dream pleasant whereas the boogeyman, boogeyman is, is his antithesis yes exactly he also has power to turn his sand into weapons mm-hmm. apparently so it sounds about right yeah that's that's pretty scary yeah and something called um vacuum morphed hmm. so he just has power to suck air really hard <laughs> <laughs> Here it says the power of a jet engine, but it's just sucking air really, really hard. Um, just sounds so just, wrong. It does. <laughs> he can give good he glug has. glug. <laughs> he gives the good glug glug. <laughs> um, so yeah, maybe Boogeyman ain't so bad. No, I'm just kidding. He's awful. He's mean. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so he, he um, there's so much. There's so much. Like this stuff goes back yeah. to before. I mean okay he's probably everywhere so the word itself comes from fifth the 15th century but there are boogeyman stories that yeah. date back way further than yeah. that before um, the term bo- like, boogeyman existed yes it's it, it apparently it's impossible to trace where it came Man, from isn't that so, fucking wild just because of how much which is why like oh the boogeyman it's yeah everybody knows the boogeyman yeah you don't just not know who that or right. what that name is yeah I mean, even if you have no idea what it is or what it's about, like, you've heard the name, probably, most likely. Um, But obviously, it was a story or a cautionary tale for kids that um, basically said that the boogeyman would take them if they strayed too far into the woods or if they were bad kids, Mm -hmm. just listening to their parents. Not listening to their parents. Um, So, yeah. Big one is if if they don't go to bed on time. That, yes. Because it has to do with the fact that the boogeyman tends to be... And underneath the, the bed underneath the bed that uh-huh. is the common it's either closet or under the bed those are the two places mm-hmm. that the boogeyman chills out in yeah and a lot of cultures um the boogeyman is shapeless yep. it doesn't really have a form yeah like a designated form or something yeah. that he really looks like so he literally is like shadow he He's is yeah pure um, shadow a, just a dark figure that you see yeah in the corner of your eye um or it could take a shape of yeah. anything that it wants to or that maybe something that you it might be scared of um it could have nails maybe yeah glowing eyes yeah horns like animal how it wants to portray itself in front of you long nasty teeth yeah it's just however it goes into your deepest darkest nightmares and Mm -hmm. takes shape of that yeah yeah um so in other cultures it is a specific thing so um i found this to be interesting yeah um la llorona mexican boogeyman you know what i wasn't i'm not shocked that that's yep yeah Mm -hmm. so that was cool there's one called vodnik from the czech republic yeah czech republic czech republic um it's a water spirit huh so it just goes into like yeah rivers and lakes and stuff and interesting haunts that they have yarama yarama yahoo yarama (laughs) yahoo I don't know, but it's from Australia. Oh, it looks like a frog with bright red fur. Oh, that's kind of cute. I kind of want him as a pet. Just, I, I'd keep him under light at all times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a clued from uh, northern Belgium, hmm. which is a dog-like demon, but it has a beak, scales, 
and fur and claws huh yeah so there's there's lots of different things oh, hombre yeah. del saco sack man from spain who carries children away in a sack yep or sells them or eats them yep <laughs> namahaj i'm guessing of japan mm. who looks for bad children but on new year's eve apparently oh, yeah. uh and they take children away who are lazy or cry too much <laughs> <laughs> You know, so there's like there in Brazil, there's uh, a cuca, which is crocodile woman. Huh. There's so many there's different so things many. like from every single culture. And in for Western pop, you um, he said that it's Jason Voorhees, Freddy Krueger. Oh, um, so they're see, Michael Myers. I can understand all of these Freddy types of Krueger more yeah. than the other two, mainly yeah. because the other two are like killers. Uh, like, yes. Not in the same sense as So I was as a little confused Freddy. as to why they chose to put that in it's but because I was they're like, just spooky uh, yeah they're figures. spooky and they come after you you know if you're but in bad reality or whatever but in reality the real one would be like freddy and the boogeyman yes because freddy and also yeah. um oh, hellraiser i could see mm-hmm. being on that list yeah they say that um oogie boogie too from Night oh Night yeah he's a hundred he's the boogeyman he literally mm-hmm. is he literally the is oogie boogie yeah that's the boogie man yeah that's the og boogie man just kidding <laughs> um, for me yes og boogie man og for me at least yeah Com- like i would agree filled with bugs and worms thank yep. you yep he's scary so yeah yeah lots of things that's cool it's crazy just uh, there's so much yeah. about this monster and uh, yeah it's a where prolific it comes from. creature definitely that is so ingrained in our society that mm-hmm. we can't help but continue to teach it right which is strange also i don't in even that know where like i heard the boogeyman from like i can't remember it's just always it's just always been been yeah which is terrifying at the same time to think about something that's just always been yeah yeah that's that cosmic horror shit that's mm-hmm. that cosmic cthulhu crap yep like, you know yep. what? Boogeyman will pop you in that category because mm-hmm. clearly mm-hmm. you've been here forever. Yeah. So kind of getting on to... Yes, give me more behind the scenes fun stuff. Fun stuff is I guess they were having a lot of fun with the script because they actually, um, they improvised a lot. Oh, I love. It really seemed natural. Yes. Like they seemed like they got along great. Truthfully, it really felt like really a family good. dynamic. Yeah. They played around with the script. Uh, they, they'd they always be like, well, this is the scene. How can we make it the best version of this? Right. What's the best possible way? Mm-hmm. And like, how can they make it come to life? And that was from their first conversations. And that's something they spoke about is like, how can they make it so that it it's not just that it feels like another horror movie with a generic horror movie family. Yeah. Um, they wanted it to feel authentic. And I feel like that was pretty successful. No, yeah. I like felt like I was a part of the family as You well. felt like there was true like emotional upset because of the situations of like the daughter's Sadie really wanting to get her dad to just talk to her yeah. or listen to her. Yes. And even at the end there when the dad came to like finally like okay and started to understand and then when in that last moments of like the sorrow and despair Mm -hmm. as the light was going out and that just like right the depth of the apology like just saying i'm sorry but Mm -hmm. like because of the moment it just felt so raw yeah yeah that's especially the deep stuff i also just love like the quippy little like talking about pulling her tooth out in the car and like sawyer throwing cheese at him like yes i thought they were that was cute i did it it felt real it felt like it was just like a moment that happened that got caught on camera yes and it's like apparently for the film also they uh one of the movies they referenced was ordinary people oh okay they tried to get uh that kind of authenticity from it Mm -hmm. because i guess it had it's some of the funniest heartbreaking lines and moments from the movie most of them were improvised in the moment or they were making notes on the script and we're playing around with it. The movie had a lot of life in it because of that. And throwing ideas around. He has watched this movie, The Boogeyman, more than he's watched any of his other films. Wow. Because it's stuff always gets lost from these performances. Like sometimes those emotions can get lost in the performances. And this this made it real. This It felt like there was emotion. The moment he was like, the moment where I can see their personality shining through. And we captured that in the DNA of the movie. Um, and that's the stuff that uh, he kept coming back to and he kept discovering new things that he didn't realize were there. So it's all of the allowing emotion 
to truly be breathed into it was a big thing for this film. Right. I I love it because like I said, they had like two weeks during like the rehearsal yeah. process to hang out. Like, yeah. And so I guess um, Chris... Yeah. And Vivian and Sophie, like the three. Yeah. Uh, apparently, Chris said that, and quote, he said, we had about two weeks of rehearsal process, which is not usual. Um, it was really me and my daughters going to the aquarium or we went bowling or we had a bunch of pizza and hung out. By the time we got to the set, we really liked each other. We really trusted each other. Therefore, we were family. That's really so sweet. sweet. That's really cute. I was like, oh, I like that a lot. That was nice. Um, And Savage like encouraged them to have a lot of playfulness, even though it was heavy, heavier stuff. Yeah, because we're talking about it's it's meant to have a realistic side of it. Like this is a real family, and unfortunately, they're just going through something that is heavily. Um, supernatural yes and even in those moments where things that are supernatural happen when a moment passes and it just becomes like a natural common response to to things like even though she rolled the thing down the hallway and her light got destroyed she came downstairs and was like how dare you do this shit to my stuff yeah and it's like i don't know what the fuck you're talking about because in reality it was like no there was a monster upstairs with you that was like doing shit and you just kind of just assumed it was your sister yeah you know and because that's what i don't know if i would assume if that was my sister though no not with the humming no not with the monster stop i just got chills don't Uh -uh. no not Mm -mm. with that shit not with that monster crap no Mm -hmm. no thank you when you when you think you heard your sister's voice and you respond only to take the covers off and she's not the fuck there no i would be like i'm just gonna go back under these covers and pretend like nothing happened yeah yes because hell no to that hell no that's some scary ass shit (laughs) no thank you please and thank you (gasps) oh and i swear to god what i don't know what little kids do in this but when that closet door opened and something ran she heard it run, run. she saw under it her run. bed she watched it and she still leaned over the bed to look under her, her bed her feet were like exposed no she went down face first she didn't like feet first no, no, no it was no, like no. she was hanging over she, the like, bed she hung over the bed with her arms and face facing down and i'm like girl no. you are asking to get got no she is like and when she rolled it and saw it and just fell off, I'm like, you know what? That I'm not That shocked. should have been the moment she got ganked. <laughs> you would think. You would think. <laughs> yeah, I would think. Because oh. it seems like the boogeyman has no... Oh, yeah. Like, Since what? we saw the fucking... Okay, so Like, just... he had every opportunity to kill them whenever he wanted to. To preface. And he just played with them. When we first watched this movie, we actually missed the first bit of this film. Yeah. So the scene, like, clearly he has no remorse. So I'm shocked he didn't kill her immediately because of yeah. the fact that he literally saw the little girl and just like, she's dead. She's dead. Blood everywhere. Bye. And I'm like... I'm kind of shocked that Sawyer didn't die sooner. No, me too. Me too, for sure. Like, but I mean, maybe they, like, because Lester's wife did say that it, her daughters called it the boogeyman. Yes. So, like, maybe it had been playing with them for a while. So, it's a, a similar situation like Sawyer, but this time, because the older sister saw it, she had someone else who was maybe older, because we don't know. I'm right. assuming the ages maybe of the other house was very young. Yeah. Whereas this one had a young one and an older, an older one. one. So there was more of a chance of them being able to like protect. Her. Yes. But also the other thing is kind of getting into also the uh, some of the vfx stuff. Yeah. So there were two artists who were helping with the VFX. Bull Vice, I'm assuming, is his is the last name. We and will never learn Pitch how Del- to say these Delorme. names before nope, we say them. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Peachy Delorme. Ooh, those it that sounds like it's not real. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so basically they had like a an interview and they were talking about like what in- intrigued them about the boogeyman. And basically once some once they found out that there was like a creature at all, they were like, I'm in. Wow. There's a creature, there's a monster. I I want to do it. And mm-hmm. the fact that especially because it was in VFX and they're not just behind the camera, they're working post production and it's stuff in the background that they're working with so it felt like uh they felt like it was a moment for them to shine because they were able to really use their their talents and they felt like they were an integral part of the project yeah. and not just kind of like a, oh we have to have some of this done it was very important and they said that they actually felt like they were 
the creature in a way because oh. of the fact that they had such an, a strong um connection with having to make that okay so they're scary people <laughs> i don't want anybody who has a connection to the boogeyman yeah me and yeah. the boogeyman were like connected no yeah and they were like um when they were reading the script they could uh they were able to witness the gradual development surrounding the boogeyman um and the progression of the action leading up to you know the final scene and mm -hmm. stuff like that where they were where you're able to catch the glimpse at its demise and just the observing the evolution of the work in the pivotal moment of the film mm -hmm. and witnessing the destruction of their design at the same time i guess was really satisfying for them because they made this really intense thing and then they also watched it die which is fascinating yeah um, and <clears throat> that's crazy so i also got their personal inspirations oh jeez! i swear if it again is rosemary's baby no, i'm going to throw my computer across the weirder. room okay and they're not movies oh, are wait. they real life events wait till you hear these oh, because it's now. not you're gonna be more of so you're gonna be so confused it's not even real okay okay so one of them was like i often find inspiration from two sources firstly my beard <laughs> hold on hold on often seems to hide little characters within it wait 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 no Se way he said that wait secondly i draw inspiration from a concrete shower where prolonged <laughs> observation can also reveal the presence of small figures. What is it, I'm Minahoonies? Not, I'm, <laughs> not sure. I'm, 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 and then the other one was like, I totally get what you mean. <laughs> and he's like, I had... I, hold on, wait. Does I, the other one also have a beard? Wait, no. I have these exquisite wooden doors at, horm, at home. <laughs> at home. At home. And sometimes I spot hidden creatures within their patterns. So they just see hidden creatures <laughs> in just, places? It's the elves. It's the weirdest... It's the Minahoonies. It's the weirdest inspiration. Oh my god. That I've ever heard. And <laughs> That is so the weirdest funny. inspiration. It's so funny. I'm just thankful it's not Rosemary's Baby again. I mean, no matter what, we 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 saw it three times in a row, so we gotta we have to watch it. We now have to watch we have it to figure out what yeah. the fuck all these people are inspired what? by. Yeah, I need to know. <laughs> and I mean, okay, so kind of getting back to the monster itself. Yeah, those guys are weird. They're weird. And now I kind of want to know them. I know, right? <laughs> inspired by beard, concrete showers, and wood doors you know little creatures hiding in places yep yep they were saying that the close-up reveal of the boogeyman's true face with the unveiling of a creature within a creature it added another level of like complexity to it particular to the special effects shots it spanned around a thousand frames and demanded meticulous animation work wow it involved two characters integrated within two adjoining worlds presenting significant challenges in terms of animation composition and lighting having to be able to have both of those things perfectly aligned and animated and all that kind of shit that's crazy. took so much i'm from sure them. i'm sure so much from them wow oh yeah oh yeah wow, i think that's crazy i we think that was it did pretty good we did I, oh oh this is the last thing that we gotta talk about okay, okay. so because of the fact that the next movies including this one, are all very modern things. They literally just came out, um, not but a couple months, when we went to go see this fucking movie. Oh, that's right. Yeah, oh yeah, I'm you so forgot about that. We blocked that shit this. out, but I'm. we talked about it in a previous episode when we were talking about I think it's because we had just went to go watch The Boogeyman, mm -hmm. so it was fresh in my mind. Oh, it was fresh. The anger is real because... <laughs> Okay, we went to go see it, and like we said, the people in the theater were rude as fuck, running so around rude. the theater constantly. Like, literally running. Literally running, not even joking. Like, actually running across in front of us and, and like, using their flashlights all over the place the like like shaking their flashlights and i'm like sitting like what people are you climbing. looking for right now you didn't even realize that they were doing this while we were watching but people the people next to us were climbing over the railing no i didn't see i was too invested you didn't see i saw it because i was like you were closer to it yeah you were closer to it hearing people talking i just don't understand like please if you go to watch a movie i'm so glad that they're doing this now they're like putting a little Yes. A clip in, f like, before the movie. Of people being rude as shit. And being like, don't be like that person. Don't be the villain. Yeah. Don't be like that. Because nobody wants to pay for a movie and sit down and have you fucking ruin it exactly. by speaking 
or like moving really loudly yes. shining flashlights everywhere oh my god running up and down the stairs constantly i don't know what the fuck these people had to do i don't know if they were like i'm scared <laughs> i don't, I don't give know a shit. i don't know if you're scared stay the fuck out we're supposed to be scared inside and if you yeah. feel like you need to leave leave and stay the fuck out because and be quiet about it it's so rude it's so rude you know what that reminds me of okay this is kind of off <laughs> topic okay. i don't know if i told you about this but recently we went to magic just for magic kingdom like oh, for yeah. a quick day or whatever i'm not a fan of disney anymore it's just it doesn't have the same effect as universal however we were on pirates of the caribbean yeah and we were just trying to enjoy the ride you know as you yeah. do and this man turns around to yeah. take a picture of his kid and the flash is on and you know how dark that, that ride, ride is. is yeah it blinded me and then he did it again and i literally got so angry i said out loud no thought no action i just went what are you doing don't do that again it's really bright <laughs> like i was so <laughs> mean and you know what the filter was gone the filter was gone it literally blinded me i'm saying yeah, like, why would fuck. you do that number one I swear, look, okay, so here's the difference between Universal and Disney. Universal does not let you film on the rides, thank God. Yeah. It's a little bit lackluster in that regards only because compared to Disney vloggers, Disney vloggers get to record when they're on their rides. Yeah. Usually the vloggers are fairly respectful about it. I wish you could kind of record on Universal, but I'm okay that you can't because then you don't, don't get dickheads like this. Yeah. I swear to God, the number of times that I've been on rides out at Universal and people are like, I'm going to take, oh my God, especially the Kong ride. Everybody wants to take a picture of Kong at the end. Yes. And I'm like, I swear to God. And as I see them pull their phone out, I'm like, I swear to God, if the flash comes on and then it comes on and I'm like, you motherfucker. Like, can you This please? is a dark scene. It's very dark. That is supposed to be like, a, he just saved you and he's letting you see him up close and it's like no flash pang i mean if you actually flashed kong like that he would kill you the truck would be smashed you're dead we would be dead so moral of the story be respectful or kong will kill you yeah like, i just i don't know how else to say it you know what please for the sake of me and, and my eyeballs and my brain and yeah, everyone else just be respectful because that also just ruins the ride experience like even it at does. disney when you can record and take pictures don't use your flash. If it's no. too dark, don't take pictures. Do I, don't, we, like, I don't care if we just sound like we're complaining, but I'm sure you wouldn't like somebody taking a photo. No. Like, uh, I'm sure I'm in the background of that photo looking pissed off as heck. Oh, hell yeah. Like, <laughs> it's, are you kidding me? It's so rude. Like, I get it. Like, if you're in a ride that's like lit up and you want to take yeah. pictures and shit because there's like, enough light. But like Small World. That ride even, is bright as like, fuck. Like the Little Mermaid. That like, one there's too. There's scenes where it's bright. Right. Even... But we were literally where we were in the water and like the giant so ship was rude. there and it was pitch black. Yeah. It's supposed to be dark. It's supposed to be nighttime. It's a yes. ra nighttime raid. It hurt. It hurt so bad. We got off the ride and the guy like stared at me and I was like, I don't care. Leave. Bye. I would give him the devil's stare I did. back. I'm like, what do you want? I did. You're the asshole. I think he felt kind of bad. I didn't do shit to you. I really do think he felt kind of bad good i made him feel bad i'm sorry but my words when i mean about it it's, it's when she like, doesn't have a filter that's when good. i don't have a filter you, most of the time i do but it's real good when she don't but it caught me off guard so bad that i just filter was gone there was like nope immediate send yes <laughs> immediate send no pause to read no pause to read <laughs> oh god yeah but that was just something we wanted yeah. to discuss movie just theater courtesy yes just, just courtesy and respectful it's kind of why i'm glad that we went to the theater that we went to for the last two films there was no one no one was there it was like and we also went to go see them in like during a time period when it's like people are working it is lunchtime it is midday Ain't nobody gonna be there nobody's here so we were it, the only ones it really was nice we had those reclining seats mm -hmm. next time we're gonna pay attention and bring fucking blankets we always forget always this time i will not let us forget i was wrapped in my hood like we will wear comfy crazy. pants yes we're gonna go the the next film we're gonna go see is a new addition to the conjuring series <laughs> and we're also going to be doing we'll talk a little closer when we get there but we're we're gonna basically be doing a little bit more and we're gonna record ourselves like looking at hhn merch yeah since it is it's a little soft open to vlogging yeah. maybe it's a soft vlogging open we're gonna look at like the merch and then we're gonna go watch yeah the nun too yes so it's gonna be great mm -hmm. amazing yeah 
So, um, one star review, one star, one review. star reviews, dude. I'm actually, did you get the one that I, that I found? No, no, no. I need, I'm going to have you talk about that one. Gotcha. Okay. Perfect. Um, these weren't really amazing. Like obviously it's just, yeah. yeah. Um, so <laughs> I, this one says I'm positive. I could write an equally lame, not scary in the least horror movie. And I thought that that was hilarious. Cause you just said that you're a shit writer. <laughs> that's basically what you said. Oof. You just said that you're a shit writer and that's on you. That's wild. Never could you ever write a movie this well-made. Thank you. Exactly. Next. What a pile of utter garbage. That's it. That's the quote. Really? Really? <laughs> it was That's just it. so short and to the point. And I was like, wow, you're very, very specific there. <laughs> so, sure. Utter garbage. Okay. Yeah, that's that's what you think. The next one is, <clears throat> why? So many whys. Why is the film so dark? Why do the characters never turn on the light? Why are children running around in the dark? It's 2023. We have light switches. We have flashlights on our damn cell phones. A creature that has been around since the beginning of man. Killed with some lighter fluid and magical mommy dust. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, the magical mommy dust is kind of funny. That's a funny sentence. I think that whole thing is funny. I'm like, that's not a... Okay, I don't agree with the one star review, but that is hilarious. Yeah. That was really good. And I give props to you for that. Your opinion sucks. However... It's wrong. It's a good bad one. And it's... it's it's i'm sorry when it's the middle of the night does your bitch ass fucking turn the lights on to go pee no do you do you and always uh, have every single one of your lights on in your house regardless of what time of day it is because i'm gonna tell you right now no the fuck you don't right and they're like why are children running around in the dark or like why they don't turn on the light well when they try to turn on the light at the end it didn't work so like exactly and it okay it literally says the boogeyman has like shadow powers yes so he has the ability to mimic yeah which is very wendigo of him Ooh, i love wendigos i love them they're fascinating they're so fascinating i don't okay i don't love them i'm not like yeah go wendigo you love Cannibalism. the concept of them the concept of them is like yeah. very well they're fascinating and until dawn did it beautifully so. oh yeah until dawn 10 out of 10 yes anyway. would recommend <laughs> not the point though you're a one-star review let's hear oh. it Okay, so I found this a little bit before we had done any of the research. Yes. And when I read it, Lily was like, hell yeah, we got to read that one. <laughs> <clears throat> its rating was zero out of four. Zero out of four. Mm-mm. By Rex Reed. Just you first know. of all, name. Oh, what? yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. He's a dinosaur. Uh-uh. <laughs> one, uh, this is our review. Uh-huh. A pointless, misguided, and totally incomprehensible waste of time is yet another horror film that exists for the sole purpose of exploiting the endless desk drawer doodlings of writer Stephen King. What the fuck? Okay, how do you get to disrespect Mr. Ste- King like that and no. still walk around alive? I'm sorry. Living. You disrespected Stephen King? Like that? And you think you still deserve to live? <laughs> okay we sound a little extreme but yes but he's an amazing i'm sorry he's an amazing effing writer and i don't want to hear it right i mean (laughs) like yeah i yeah just his books are really fascinating he's come up with some really interesting really cool creatures desk Desk drawer drawer. doodling are you kidding so rude it makes it sound like it it makes it sound like he doesn't give a shit about any of the other writings that stephen king has ever done right like i'm sorry but stephen king is a legend uh for a reason correct yeah he instilled fear into people without question Mm -hmm. come on so uh, that's why there are so many movies based on his writings mm -hmm. there's video games movies all sorts of shit i don't want to like it's wild right Wild. there's so many things like man has made bank because of his brain and you called it desk draw doodlings you know rex what movie scares you right what movie scares I wanna you, Because I want to know. Mm. I want to know. I feel like it might be body horror. <laughs> 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 Same as me, but... It's wild. You know, that's fine. It, yeah. Clowns from Outer Space probably freaks him out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We've got that one later this year. Yes, we do. We, yes, we do. do. Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Yes, we do. But yeah, one star reviews, man. Oh, yeah. They can either be really funny or really brutal. Yes. And yes. also sometimes really... Stupid. <laughs> yeah great movie one star (laughs) (laughs) yeah (laughs) so dumb i don't know like that Uh, was so bad i don't know wild wild 
so yeah i can't wait till we run across another one of those anyway <laughs> <laughs> um, i'll put i'll make sure to put it in i'm, I'm sure that it's somewhere oh, yeah oh yeah i'm sure so uh you know rate review only five us. star only five star uh follow us on instagram and twitter at horror unmasked listen uh on spotify itunes at horror unmasked podcast and follow our youtube channel at horror unmasked podcast like i said we're gonna hopefully it won't be as consistent and all the time but we are going to attempt to vlog a little bit that'll be kind of a new thing in combination now that we've had with like it. what 10 episodes come out almost 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 this is eight so we're getting there we got two more and then we're 10 because we also have our chicha episodes that have come out so yep 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 wow our next film will be talk to me which again follows our trend of newer films. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Yeah, I definitely have some opinions. <laughs> I know you have opinions. This is gonna be. I feel like this is gonna be the defi- deci- divisive one between the two of us to some degree. Um, to some degree, I don't. I think feel it's... like Demeter might be even more divisive. I don't know about that. Like, don't I don't think they're bad movies. I just didn't connect to them as much as I did. Yeah, gotcha. I think that's about it. So all I gotta say is. Will you fear? Or will you fear not? <laughs>